In this video, we're going to have a look at solving quadratic equations. Now, for most of you, you've definitely seen quadratic equations before, probably in grade 9 and 10. And when solving grade quadratic equations in grade 11, you'll see that we've got three distinct methods that we can use. The first method is the one that we're going to focus on in this video, and it's basically going to be a recap of work that you've already done in grade 9 and 10. So that first method that you would use is factorization. The second method is to complete the square, and that we'll look at in the next video after this. And the third method that you can use is the quadratic formula, and that will be the last video in this series of work on quadratic equations. However, no matter which method you decide you're going to use to solve quadratic equations, you need to understand that the first step that you need to use is never going to change. And that first step is written out here for you, and that is to get your equation into standard form. Now, a lot of you have probably already been taught this by your teachers, but just to remind you, whenever you're solving a quadratic equation, the way that you want to set it up is like this, where you've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This over here is the standard form of a quadratic equation. And all that you need to remember is that these variables x over there are going in descending power. So in other words, we've got x to the power of two, then x to the power of one, and then a constant at the end. And on the right hand side, you've got to have that zero over there. And if you can get your equation into standard form, then it makes it a lot easier for you to go ahead and factorize it or complete the square or use the quadratic formula. The moment it's in standard form, majority of the work is already done for you. So because you've already focused a lot on factorization before, you're probably quite familiar with it. Let's go and look at a few examples of just how we might apply it in a question. So here's the question we're going to start with. x squared minus x minus 6 equals zero. Now you already see the steps coming up on the screen in front of you. The first step is always to make sure it's in standard form. And looking at this equation, we've got the x squared first, then the x to the power of one in the second position or in the middle there. And the last one, we have the constant. And then of course, zero on the right hand side. So it's already in standard form for us. Then the method that we can go and use to solve it is just to factorize. So this is a trinomial, and the way that you always need to start when factorizing trinomials is to write out your two brackets. So there's the two brackets, and hopefully by now you'll know that we go and look at whatever that sign is in front of the constant, and that's gonna tell us what sign we need in either of the brackets. So because that's a negative over there, we know that one bracket will need to have a positive and the other bracket will need to have a negative in it. Once we've done that, I would always suggest that you go and take the coefficient in front of the x squared and write its factors down. So in this case, the factors of x squared are just one and one. And then go and take the constant at the end, which in this case is six, and write down the factors of six. So we know that the factors of six are three and two, or two and three. We've also got six and one, or one and six. And it's now our job to go across these factors and determine which combination is going to work together to give us the negative one there that is in front of the x in the middle term. And so cross multiply it like so. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. We know that the signs from inside our bracket was 1 with a plus and 1 with a negative. And so if we try that combination, 1 plus, 1 negative, and we add them together, we end up with negative 1. And negative 1 is exactly what we were looking for to get in front of that x squared. So we know that then we've got the perfect combination already. And so how you decide what to put in the brackets 
is simply by circling those two and circling the two at the bottom. That tells you exactly what needs to go in the bracket. And just to be even more certain, we know that at the bottom here we've got that negative 3. And we saw that the way we got to negative 3 was by following along this diagonal there and went 1 times 3. So we're just going to put the negative in front of it there. And that would allow us to get to that negative 3. So your first bracket would be 1x minus 3. So there's your x minus 3. And then 1x plus 2, like so. And there we have gone and factorized our trinomial perfectly. The second step was then to make each of these factors. So there's one factor and there's the other factor. We had to make them equal zero. So we'll take that first factor and we'll go x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 and then simply solve for x. So we move that 2 over, we get x is equal to minus 2 or when we move that 3 over, we get x is equal to 3. And that is how you solve a question using factorization. Let's have a look at another example now. The second example that we'll look at follows the exact same method. The problem is we don't have the equation in standard form. So when you see something like this, the first giveaway is the fact that you don't have a zero on the right hand side. Because a lot of people might have been tempted then to go and make this bracket equal to zero and solve it. But we haven't got a zero there, so it's not in standard form and it hasn't been solved yet. So to get this equation into standard form, I hope you see we're going to need to distribute that x into the bracket and then of course move the 20 over to the left hand side. So when we distribute that x into the bracket, it's going to be x times 3x, which is 3x squared, minus 7 times x, which is 7x. The 20 comes over and when it comes over it becomes negative 20 and that equals 0. Now it's in standard form because we've got our x squared, our x, our constant, and our zero. So it's perfectly in standard form. Then we want to factorize it. So to factorize, we take the coefficient in front of the x squared and we write down its factors. Then we go and take the constant at the end and we go and write down its factors. So the factors of 20, are going to be 4 and 5 or 5 and 4 we've also got 10 and 2 or 2 and 10 and hopefully you see in this case that the 20 and the 1 is probably not going to work so we don't need to use that factor you can just write down the ones you think will be more likely to work out for you and then we cross multiply so when we cross multiply here it's going to be 3 times 5 which is 15 and 1 times 4, which is just 4. Don't forget, firstly, to put your two brackets out as well. Like so. We've got a negative there. It's going to be 1 plus and 1 minus. And then we can see if we go put the plus or the minus in any combination here. So plus 15 minus 4 does not give us negative 7. And minus 15 plus 4 doesn't give us negative 11 either. So it doesn't work out with those first two factors. So we've got to move on to the next set. The next set, we've got 3 times 4, which is 12. And 1 times 5, which is 5. And there we can see that if we went with negative 12 and the positive 5, we would end up with negative 7, which is exactly what we want from that middle term there. And so to get to that negative 12, we know there would need to be a small negative in front of the 4 there, because we follow that diagonal across. And then we know that that will be the one bracket with the positive, and that will be the other bracket with the negative. So it will be 3x plus 5 from that first circle there 
and then 1x, which is just x, minus 4 over there. And so when you simplify that, you get that x is equal to minus 5 over 3, or x is equal to 4. And there's our answer. Let's have a look at another example then. The last question that we'll look at, again, we're going to use factorization to solve it. But hopefully you see immediately that this doesn't exactly look like a quadratic equation to start with. And what you'll see is that we've got a fraction here in this middle term. Now guys, the rule for whenever you have a fraction in an equation is to find an LCD and then multiply that lowest common denominator, that LCD, onto every term in the equation. So we've got a term there, a term there, and a term there. So our first step is to find our LCD, or our lowest common denominator, which in this case is x, and we're going to take this x and multiply it onto the first term, the second term, and the third term. And when we do that, we're going to get 2x times x, which is 2x squared, and then 21 over x, and I'll just do it on the side here, 21 over x times by x. You can always imagine it as having a small invisible x underneath, x over 1, like so. And then those x's are going to cancel out. So all we're going to be left with is plus 21, and that all equals 17 times x as well, which is 17x. And now you see it's got the pieces to be a quadratic equation because we've got that x squared, the constant, and the single x over there. So we get it into our standard form, which would be 2x squared. Bring the 17 over to become negative 17x plus 21 equals 0. Now it's in standard form. And guys, you get a mark for that standard form as well in your exam. So always arrange it like that. And once you've done that, we can factorize it. So there's our two brackets, like so. We've got a positive in front of the constant, which means we need to go over and look at what the sign is over there. It's negative. So that means both brackets will be negative, like so. And then write down the factors of that coefficient of x squared, which would be 2 and 1. And then, of course, the 21 there at the end, go and write down those factors as well. So the factors of 21 is going to be 3 and 7, like so. We can then cross multiply. So 2 times 7 is 14, and 1 times 3 is is 3. We've got both negatives from inside those two brackets. So minus 14 minus 3 gives us negative 17. And look at that. Negative 17 there, negative 17 in our middle term. They match up perfectly. And so this would be our first bracket there, and that would be our second bracket. And the order is not going to matter because they both have the same sign in them. So it will be 2x minus 3 and 1x minus 7. And so your final answer when you make the two factors equal 0 would be x is equal to 3 over 2 or x is equal to 7. And that's your answer to this question. The next video that we'll have a look at will deal with completing the square in order to solve quadratic equations.